en sí el deseo del pueblo entero. Where are those kids? Where do they have them? If they are okay, bring them back. Honduras, one of the most violent and dangerous countries in the world, constantly dealing with major problems related to corruption and extreme gang violence. And on top of this, only a few months ago, Honduras was struck by two major hurricanes, which wiped out entire neighborhoods. Because of all this compounding suffering, thousands have fled the country, headed towards the United States for a better life. Throughout this video series, I will travel all throughout Honduras, meet the people, and hear their side of the story. Do you feel safe living here? No. Not at all, not at all. Passport. Where are those kids? I'm Carlos. Carlos, I'm next. Va, va para abajo. Another day here in San Pedro Sula. We are leaving. We're going to go towards the coast. We're going to a settlement which has roots of Nigeria. So it's an African population. It's always an interesting day in Honduras. If you've seen the last videos, it feels reasonably comfortable, but then you never know what can happen because honestly speaking, it did used to be the murder capital of the world. It's a bit safer now, but you know, when you've had that title in such recent history, less than 10 years ago, you know that uh, something can pop off. So. Should be okay, but you know, best to keep an eye. I've got a cameraman telling me not to. Things here, security is very tight. They, you can't really get away with anything, so gotta go. Amare, can you just please explain what just happened? A truck coming towards us oh, with no yeah. warning? There was no sign uh, on the on the road and then uh, suddenly there was a big truck coming to us and I, I didn't know why and I was like... Uh, and it, it, it's because of the people took the other side of the highway because of the flooding. So this is homeless people. So because of the hurricane people that were displaced came and basically like hijacked yeah. the road and yeah. set up tents. Yeah, and so the yeah. traffic had to drive around and uh, we should we should have some kind of a sign that this is yeah there was no sign we just see no this sign, huge truck a, coming a towards truck. us yeah you yeah. have to be careful driving here One thing about this country is that security is extremely strict. Everywhere you go, there's guys with shotguns, like literally everywhere. For example, like a, a little convenient, a convenience store or a pizzeria, petrol stations. Uh, I've come away to talk about this, um, and I could, they could tell me off in a second. They're very sensitive to anything to do with cameras. And so it does seem like you can see, see the beautiful nature and everything, and it does feel somewhat calm, but if there's this much security, that definitely says something. Uh, about the situation here. Like I say, safety has improved from what I've uh, been told, but it's still obviously on the, on the edge. It's kind of this weird atmosphere, calm and then intense at the same time. You should go and pay, get out of here. Just quickly before we jump on the road, I just paid. When you pay here, you have to put your pin number in for your card, you have to sign, you have to show your passport, and they have to take your ID number because of credit card fraud. Even going into, into like, a, a food shop or something, you have to go through all these checks. Very, very strict security here, I must emphasize that. So we have arrived in Triumph de la Cruz. So this is actually obviously very beautiful. Honduras has an amazing coastline, that's the Caribbean Sea there. The island's off the coast of Honduras, specifically Utila. It's one of the cheapest places to do scuba diving and get your license and things. So there is like these beautiful kind of touristic places in Honduras as well. Don't get me wrong, it's not all crime and, and violence. 
that is a big part but there's also very beautiful areas so this town here was settled by Nigerians like five six hundred years ago so we're gonna go in and we're gonna meet some of the African community here see uh, how they live go into some of the houses meet the people very tranquil nice place friendly people let's go have a look around so we've come into the town and we've met a lovely lady called Bruna. She's uh, invited us to have a look around her house and she's got this like uh, potion but apparently they don't have Zika virus or dengue or coronavirus because of this this potion that they've made and uh, that they consume it all throughout the community. So Amara, can you just uh, explain what's in this concoction here? Some traditional bath that they have, Santa Maria tree leaves. So they mix it, they boil it and they use this as a uh, medicine. So, a medicine there's a low number of dengue or Zika or because there's a we're by the beach and there's a lot of insects here but this is kind of uh, helping them to to prevent Did they say something about it helping with coronavirus yeah they mentioned that too as well right which I'm not uh, certain if it's accurate accurate uh -huh. scientific or anything atrás donde doctors uh, medics they, they don't recognize the, the, the value but uh, indigenous people and uh, these other ethnic groups they are still using and it for them it seems to work work so here we are in the house here really nice vibes around here the beach is literally two seconds walk down the street very like positive and happy people here Okay, so we're here with Bruna. Bruna, how is life here? Basically here we live uh, out of agriculture. We bake bread, growing plants and vegetables and that's, that's what... So self-sufficient kind of? Yep. Uh -huh. Agriculture, fishing, tourism is very important. She's talking about big corporations trying to take their land, but they fight back. We, we, we did not allow them to because they came with fake documents and fake papers. So there's an issue here with big uh, resorts and things coming in trying to push out the local people and build resorts. They don't want this traditional way of living. They want to the make money down, out of yeah. this beautiful beach that these people have. But these people have been living here for Hundreds generations. Yeah. It's money involved. You have a beautiful beach, you have close to the road, and you obviously want to take take advantage of that. Muchas gracias. Okay, bueno. Gracias a ustedes. años han mantenido en silencio y ahora es tiempo de hablar. Mientras los caudillos y mercenarios se enriquecen en el nombre de un pueblo que se muere de hambre y de dolor, oh señor. The location in between a huge lagoon and then the, the Caribbean here. So we've come to uh, a local lady called Clara's house and she's cooking for us so we're going to try some of the, the food here. And then she wants to speak a bit about some issues that uh, they've been facing as a community. Something in about an abduction of activists. Uh, in terms of big um, resorts and big investments coming in here and, and these people resisting that. So there's been some dark things happening that she really, she specifically asked if she can talk to the camera about it. But firstly, let's enjoy the delicious food that she's cooking for us right here on the beach. Like, you can see why this is highly desired land, you know. So they're cooking some rice and beans. Pollo? Si, pollo. Sí. Pescado? Pescado. Uh -huh. sí. Tajada de plátano. Plátano. Uh -huh. And yuca. Yuca. Sí. Pues tenemos almuerzos, Okay. Perfecto. <laughs> Gracias. Hace más de 200 años nos han mantenido en silencio y ahora es tiempo de hablar. Mientras los caudillos y mercenarios se enriquecen en el nombre de un pueblo que se muere de hambre y de dolor, oh señor. 
Allá nos tienen una... Oh, hola, mi nombre es Clara Flores. Soy de la comunidad garífuna de Trinco de la Cruz. These people from the government, without consulting, without asking, they took over the land without the permission, illegally, not considering the historical ancestry, and they inherited and they've been here for generations. Yeah, there's a lot of money involved here. The land is uh, it's beautiful, it's by the beach, so that's the, that's the reason why everybody's trying to move them away. So they're trying to move them away and then take the valuable land, mm -hmm. essentially. That's the core that's, of the that's, problem. That's essential. That's the, that's uh -huh. the point of all the whole thing. Right. Make money. They have the right to stay here. They have the right over the land. But still the Honduran government is not uh, following what this international court uh, ruled. Uh, in favor of, uh, of them. They are still selling to so this big uh, resort, so this, they are still building. She was uh, talking also about the Centeno, who was uh, Presidente del Patronato, which is the leader of the community, who was abducted with uh, three other guys, and she's uh, asking for them to be returned to the families, returned to the community, because uh, till these days, they, we don't know what, what happened to them, so we got very emotional about that. So as you can see, Clara is getting quite emotional there. It's quite, quite scary that uh, people are going missing, leaders of the community and things, because their land is uh, being taken away from them. See the guys just ride past with the sticks on their back? That's to build uh, these kind of structures here. A guy called Lewis, who's been showing us around this neighborhood. He's actually living in San Pedro, but he came with us today to guide us around here. This is his neighborhood. He's about to put on a musical show for us because he's a musician. Uh, the drum has arrived. So that was Lewis on the guitar with his friends on the drums there. Uh, the music that I've been using in some of these videos is actually Lewis's music. Some of the drone footage and things, that's Lewis's music. So I'm going to leave Lewis's Facebook below, that's where he posts his music. And uh, go and check out his Facebook and follow him and things. So now we've come to this football or, or soccer pitch. Young lads, 16 and under, are, are playing football. Something great about this community is it is not run by gangs at all. There's no gang influence here. But sadly now the problem is, from what they've been saying, the problem is from the government trying to take their land. So very sad you know they're, they're living such a peaceful existence for so long and and now uh, people have gone missing leaders of the community they haven't seen them apparently they've been abducted because they were fighting back against this kind of thing and, and they've been to international courts and actually won the case but this is still happening that seems to be the kind of theme of Honduras so far it's nice on the surface and there's lots of beautiful things going on but it's got a very dark underside so far from the people that I've met and the stories they've told that's all I can go off and I believe that's a fair reflection of, of, of the country hello guys so my name is uh, Edgar Benedict so I am the president uh, from the the program soccer for the kids here in Honduras, keeping people, uh, especially young people, out of the drug, alcohol. The objective is to get kids away from crime and drugs and alcohol and exactly. give them a better opportunity and get them active and exactly. be a part of a community. Yeah, this is what they do. It. Yeah, so because we just try to to try to avoid them to to get the, to go to the drug, you know. If Trouble. We see, and, yeah. So yeah, if we see some someone who go to, see, or to this, uh, maybe the wrong way, so we try to, you know, try get him here. So some of these kids have been in trouble, and you've helped them out. Or? Yeah, we, we we help them. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. beautiful. It's not easy, you know, to hear because you not know, to get uh, like a support from the government or some, you know. But so we, so we try to mock them the best we can do you know? okay so like a, like a community i'll leave the information below if anybody wants to read more about it
You yes. have you have a, a website or a Facebook yeah. page? Or something? Yeah, we have fa fa uh, Facebook page. They just go to the Copa Nomada. Okay, like I'll, I'll leave a link it. below, and people can click on it exactly. in the description. They, they can, yeah, they will be fine okay. in the description. Wow, gracias. Keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah man, thank Mucho you very gusto. much. So. Cheers. Okay, so we're here with Lewis. He looks a lot younger than he is. Lewis is actually 49 years old, right? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yes. What's the secret? <laughs> How do you look so young? No despelarse mucho, alimentarse muy bien. No. Uh, take care of yourself. Good food and don't stay up right. late. Sleep well. Sleep well. We're currently on the way back to San Pedro right now, but you're originally from where we just came from, that you lived in the settlement next to the beach, but then you moved to San Pedro for opportunities. What's the differences between the city like San Pedro, which has a notorious reputation to living out there? What are the main differences? <laughs> the city gives opportunities, it gives a, so you can study, there's a job, but obviously it's better to be in a small community where you're safer and you have uh, obviously your family. Do you feel safe in San Pedro? La verdad no. Me siento más seguro en la To be honest, no. It's better in Triunfo de la Cruz where I can walk and uh, late at night and nothing will happen to me, which is not the case for San Pedro Sula. What are you worried about happening to you in San Pedro Sula? La violencia de San Pedro Sula es un lugar... It's unsafe. So anything can happen and because of the gang activities. Obviously we've seen you're a very, very talented musician. What are your goals for your music? Wants to deliver to you, the young people the message of bring values from the past to today, implying that in the old times it was safer or whatever, it was better. The goal is to uh, teach the next generation a better way of life and a yeah. more positive... Values. And values and, and positivity. As an artist, living up his music here in Honduras is very, very difficult. That it's difficult to make a living. Nuestros muchachos. Our boys were abducted. We had this international human rights claim against the government. So this is all about land again. They were abducted by military men. This was the, during Corona time. So there was a, there is a curfew, so no one is supposed to be outside before uh, sunrise, and they were taken like at four four o'clock in the morning. You obviously want the world to know about this. Is there anything that you want to say directly? Maybe one thing what you would like to see happen. En sí el deseo del pueblo entero. The whole Garifuna community is just asking the government, where are those kids? Where do they have them? If they are okay, bring them back. Four young men. Four young men. Uh, presumably just lost. Nobody knows anything from from them since since they were abducted. How old? 28, 28. 30 years. So this is young men. Gracias. several hours into the day. It's been a over 13 hour day so it's been quite hectic but we did see a lot. You know always bittersweet so far in this country. So we dropped Lewis off in San Pedro and we've driven another few hours down the road. In the next video we're going to be heading to the capital city, the biggest city in Honduras. So when we were actually filming the interview there with Lewis up against the bus, apparently there was a guy on a horse with a revolver pistol watching us. So. Um, this is what Lewis said, and that's quite the norm. Um, many people have weapons here, quite an intense country. I can see how you could oversee these things. I could see how it could come across as quite innocent. But talking to all the different locals, I've spoken to actually quite a few locals at this point. Under the surface, there's very dark things happening. Again, it's safer than it used to be, from all accounts. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Need to get into that bed right now. And uh, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night from Honduras. <laughs>